Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash, that's giving our praise to the Most High. 144, 1044, Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash, Rakatah. Double honest to our teachers and elders and apostles of great millstone who taught us his truth and truth and sincerity, peace and salutations to the hopeful that scattered abroad. My name is Abar from the Prophets in Babylon camp down here in Tampa, Florida. I played this video. I got two videos I want to play and showing you that our salvation is nearer than we believed. It says, man standing under massive UFO, which biblically, biblically is called a chariot. I ain't never seen them in the sky in my life. Look how bright the sky is, though. Am I tripping? If I'm tripping, tell me I'm tripping. Right, if I'm tripping, tell me I'm tripping. But well, what is that? I ain't crazy. I promise y'all, I ain't crazy. Okay, Shalom. So what you see right here is uh, two different videos of uh, things in the sky. Okay, these particular things are being seen in the sky, signs in the heavens, and these are what, what this world calls UFOs, which they're called chariots according to the Bible. And the holy angels are in these vi uh, these vessels, these vehicles, um, and watching over. Okay, taking uh, a they're making reports of what they're seeing being done on the earth. And they're constantly watching over us, which means that we're going to start seeing more and more of this in the last days, which shows that our salvation is nearer than we believe. And we're almost out of here, man. All right. This is a uh, very spiritual. And you had two Jakes. I believe the first guy, this was a Jake. And this individual was a Jake too. Say, so what the fuck was that? I never seen him in the sky in my life. I mean, but you, you, you can hear Jake talking and he says, man standing under massive UFO, which is the chariots according to the Bible. All right. And that's just a miraculous sight. Okay, imagine one day you look up and you see the stands, uh, you know, hovering over you. And really, if you have the spiritual eyes to see and understand that chariots are always hovering over us, they just cloak themselves, as you're seeing right here. It's the sky is a cloud. You got a, such a thing called cloud chariots, okay, or cloud UFOs, where it's um, UFO-shaped clouds, which those are really, you know, ships that are cloaked as clouds, all right? But those who have eyes to see will be able to see. So let's grab a few scriptures that's going into what time we're coming into. Because if you see all these things happening on earth, understand the Lord is doing something in the heavens as well. This is, um, let's go right here first. It says, um, Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Let's go to verse 23. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring man's hearts failing them for fear and for and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and that's what we're seeing the powers of heaven is being shaken man all right these uh elites they know their time is short esau knows he have but a short time it says then and then shall they see the son of man coming in the cloud in a cloud with power and great glory all right, now this cloud here is symbolic for a chariot. Let's see if we can grab some more on it. I don't think it's probably not going to say much. But we know that this is talking about a chariot, okay? And when the Lord left, he left in a cloud. This is a cloud used. Oh, look at this. Let's play it. Strong's G3507. Nefele. Nefele. 
it says a cloud use of the cloud which led the Israelites in the wilderness. Now we know that what led the Israelites in the wilderness wasn't a literal cloud. It was a chariot. Okay. It was a, ch a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So that was a chariot. And that's more like what you see right here. You see this thing had like lights on it, man. Okay. So in the, and it was, if it was complete darkness, this thing would light up, you know, the whole, you know, area. So that's the time we're coming into. We're going to start seeing more of these things, miraculous things happening in the earth. And we're going to know it's the Lord that's doing this. Okay, bringing it back. It says, um, it says, verse 28. And when these things begin to happen, begin to come a pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw nigh. So our redemption is drawing nigh. Okay, our redemption is drawing nigh. And that's what that means. And this individual, he looked up and he saw this hovering over him. Okay, which those are the angels. Let's grab in the NLT. It says, um, verse 25, and there will be strange signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil. And we are seeing this beginning now with we'll all these rumors of wars. It says, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides, people will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth. For the powers of the heaven will be shaken. It says, then everyone will see the son of man coming with on a cloud with power and great glory. So everybody's going to see this. Uh, so when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up for your salvation is near. All right. And that's, uh, you know, uh, an example of that, man. The Lord is showing us that our salvation is near. So in these last days, we're going to see more, you know, uh, stories and videos about people seeing things that are out of this world, you know, in the heavens. They're going to start seeing more ships. So they're going to start seeing a lot more of these things um, taking place. You know, it's going to get closer and closer, showing you that we're almost out of here. Romans chapter 13, verse 11, it says, And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. And our people, they are dead. Okay, they are dead asleep, man. Okay, dead from the neck up, don't know who they are, don't know who their power is, don't know who, who, who their enemy is. They have no idea what's going on. But now it's high time to awake out of sleep. It says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So now we got to, you know, come into this light, man. Okay, and, we, and, we, and we're getting closer and closer to that light as days goes on. Okay, and farther from darkness, you shouldn't be in this truth. Still doing the things that the pe people do, people of this world do. You shouldn't be in this truth and this light and still participating with darkness. What fellowship does light have with darkness? It says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, and make, no pr and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And this is what Jake still do to this day. And Jake's still trying to make provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. They still want to go out and party and clubbing and having a good time. We ain't in that time. We in the time of, you know, really, you know, a locking in, man. All right, being circumspect, you know, growing more in the spirit. It ain't about how many lessons you do. It ain't about how many precepts you know, how many breakdowns you know. It's about how much you are in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai, how often you are seeking him, praying unto him in truth and sincerity. You know, if all Israel was to turn and face the east and pray to Yahweh Bashim Shai, we will be out of here tomorrow. Okay, we'll, we, we, shit, we'll, we, we'll be out of here today. If Jake did it to our day, man. You see? But we know that they're not going to do that. And this is why we're still here. Jake really love it here. You know, they don't, they don't got a problem with being in captivity. If anything, they, they, they like this captivity. And that's a problem. All right, it says, Psalm 68, verse 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as the Sinai in the holy place. So, these uh, ships that we see, these are the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Shai. It says, uh, and there are 20,000, even thousands of angels. So, they, so when the Lord comes back, he's coming back with a multitude of ships. It says, the Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. All right. So the angels are in these, uh, these vehicles. Okay. The angels are in these vehicles. And they're going to start showing themselves more and more in these last days. All right. And we want to found being found worthy. To escape this place, we gotta we, we wanna hope that we can be able to uh enter into these ships, okay, to get salvation. 
Isaiah chapter 66 verse 15 for behold the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire and this is what we're about to start seeing these last days man all right the Lord's going to start making his appearance it says for by fire and by his sword will the Lord Yahweh plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many so you're going to see many people getting put to death in these last days man the slain of the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shai shall be many all right, a lot of people are going to lose their lives for not serving Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, for rejecting Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And that's literally what's going on. The majority of our people have already rejected Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So now what's going to happen? The Lord is about to reject them. He's going to reject you. All right, the Lord said, I will leave you there and melt you. You, you. you don't want to get caught off guard and get left here to be melted with the rest of these heathens and these people, man. You hope that the Lord have mercy and, he, and you get beamed up into these ships. That's the whole goal. That, 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 that's what we're here for. All right. It says, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 1. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations um, out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. You're right. So you got to put away these abominations, man. Okay. We can't continue to be niggas, bro. We can't continue to be out here. You know, trying to be like trying to be like the rest of these damn heathens and these niggas out here, because that's gonna get you killed with these niggas and these heathens. In the NLT it says, O Israel says the Lord, if you wanted to return to me, you could. You could throw away your de de detestable idols and stray away no more. You see, so you could. You could come back to your house from y'all shy. But we know two thirds of our people, they don't want to do that. They don't want to throw away their detestable idols. They don't want to come back to your house from y'all shy in truth and sincerity. So ultimately they're gonna have to be destroyed. And it is what it is. We just hope that we can be delivered when this destruction comes. You know, it scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It says, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 13, for behold, behold, he shall come. It says, behold, he shall come as a, as he, he shall come as, shlakia. he shall come up as clouds and his chariot shall be like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled, right? You see? So we got to come back to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It says, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. That's the whole point, is to be saved. We want to get the hell up out of here, man. The whole point is that we can be saved. And this is a part of our salvation. Should we talk about the strangeness of their salvation? Let me grab that real quick. This is a part of our salvation, man. All right? And this is going to be strange to the whole world let me finish this up first before i go there it says um O jerusalem watch thine heart from wickedness meaning your mind that thou mayest be saved how long shalt thou thy vain thoughts lodge within thee you know how long are you gonna continue to think like a nigga you don't want to be a nigga and the nlt O jerusalem cleanse your heart that you may be saved how long will you harbor your evil thoughts right Right here it says, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and they shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for, because you got Jake looking for a record deal. You got Jake, uh, you know, look, 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 looking for the next blunt where the hole's at. You got a chick that's, you know, trying to find, you know, uh, the next lick. You got a chick that's, uh, you know, trying to find the plug. Listen, man, those those things are going to get you out of here. What's going to get you out of here is Yahweh Bashim Shai coming with salvation in his wings. Or it's like with healing in his wings. It says, for they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and in, in in the proverb of reproach. I mean, people that come up against us for believing our in this truth and serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, that they, they're, they're going to regret that. It says, "We fools account his life madness, and to his end to be without honor." We think we're wasting our time. How is he numbered among the children of God, and his lot is among the saints? All right, and that's the whole goal is that we want to get delivered. You know, when the saints go marching in, you know, oh how you would love to be of that number. Let me grab um. Let me see um. Let's grab this. Let's grab this, man. It says, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 18. Son of man, 
the house of Israel is become become dross. It's be is to me become dross. They are all brass and tin and iron and lead. In the midst of the furnace, they are even the dross of silver, which means, uh, uh, uh you know, uh, silver gets like a a, a film over, uh, you know, it's filth. It gets dirty. It's film, you know, it has to be polished. But if you don't polish it, it's going to get, you know, uh, this, you know, this film of dirt on it, you know, that really is um unpleasant, you know, to see, you know, and that's what happened to Israel. We have become unpleasant until you howl by All right, and the Lord promised that He was going to burn this place with fire. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver and brass and and iron and lead and tin, into the midst of the furnace, to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. You see, you don't want to get left here. You don't want to find yourself not being on this ship. Okay, and I've been on that ship when I'm nukes are raining upon this place because you will be melted. You will be destroyed. The whole goal is to get the hell up out of here. And if you don't want to get the hell up out of here, then you're going to be left here. You're going to be destroyed. And that's going to be that. All right. Let's grab uh, one more before we go. It says um, Isaiah chapter 26 verse... 20 it says come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed so he says come and hide thyself come into the chambers the chambers are symbolic for the chariots hide thyself as it were for a little moment until thy indignation be overpassed which is the righteous anger of Yahweh Shai. when he melts this place when he burns this place with thermonuclear fire the elect are going to have to get beamed up into those ships Okay, and if you don't get beaten into them ships, then guess what? Then you're, you're going to be dead. For behold, the Lord cometh out of the mist, out of his place, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The blood, the like of the earth, also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. So there you go. Judgment is coming, man. All right, judgment is coming. You don't want to be a part of that. Let me grab one more Salakia. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 1. This is the book of Acts chapter 1. It says, um, verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. So we don't know when the Lord is coming back. Only person that knows when this day is coming is the Lord, the Most High, Yahweh. It says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and, un and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You know, over here in America. Okay, this is the uttermost part of the earth. So we're going to receive power over here in, the, in, these, um, in this land of America. It says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So that cloud is talking about a chariot. Okay, not a little rain cloud, a chariot. It says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which were angels, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Question mark. This is this same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem for the mount from the mount of olive for, it's like from the mount called uh olivet and uh, which is from Jerusalem a sabbath day's journey so the point is that those angels they told him that the lord is going to come back the same way he left he he left in the ship he's going to come back in the ship a great mighty ship okay and this is why we are uh, doing what we're doing Anticipating the mighty day of Yahweh Bashim you know, Shah when he makes his return, he, he burns his place up, and Lord willing, we can be delivered, we can be saved. And this is why we're going to start seeing more visuals of stuff like this right here, okay? We're going to start seeing more ships, more UFOs, as they call them on the side, UAPs, whatever they want to call them. But we know that those are the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh 
And the Lord is about to, you know, do some miraculous things on this earth to deliver his elect. Okay. He's about to deliver his elect. So pay attention, man. You know, hey, we almost out of here, Akim and Akwaf. Keep the faith. Okay. Endure until the end. Scripture, scripture says, um, when he comes, shall he find faith on earth? A lot of people are going to lose faith. But, 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 but all you can do is hope that you don't lose faith. Hope that you endure until the end. Hope that you continue to believe in hopes to be saved, to be delivered. Okay, so these are just different examples of, um, you know, these ships, these vessels that's coming to deliver the nation of Israel. With that being said, I'm going to say Shalom. Kwame Shural, Ababa Bar, praise the Lord, the edifying, and the hopeful elect. Shalom. Double honor to our teachers, the elders, and apostles, the great millstone.